Today we are taking a first look at the new Sons of Liberty Gunworks broadsword. Now this is going to be my initial impressions as I've only had a few hundred rounds through it. But before we get into that, I do have to make a quick announcement. I'm excited to announce that I'm now part of the Sons of Liberty Gunworks shooting team. So thank you to Mike, thank you to Kyle and Preacher, the entire crew at Sons of Liberty. I appreciate all of them. They're, they're always very welcoming, always super cool with me, answer any questions I have. And I'm really appreciative of what they do for the 2A community as a whole, not just for law enforcement and military. So thank you again to all of them. Looking forward to this year. This will allow me to put out more match content, more training content, more info for you guys. It's not necessarily all going to be geared about Sons of Liberty. It's going to be more about the training, the competing, and actually using the equipment. Because of that, rather than doing a review, which I wouldn't feel like would be ethical, uh, it's going to be more of a series of videos where I show you guys all the data. I show you guys me dialing it in, me getting acquainted with it, and getting ready for next year so that you guys can come to your own conclusions and decide whether or not this is something you want, or maybe it'll lead you in the right direction to something you do want or don't want. So just helping you guys be more educated as you're making purchases or as you're preparing for whatever it is you're preparing for, it's competition or self-defense, whatever. So. With that out of the way, let's talk about the new Sons of Liberty Gunworks broadsword. They sent over the new broadsword upper. I've already been using the broadsword lower, which is the Ford Control Sons of Liberty combo lower. I switched over to that about midway through the year. Some of you guys noticed that, some of you didn't, but I've been using that for the second half of, of this year. All that's pretty much stayed the same. The only thing I've changed on that lower is I switched back to the Ford Controls Sons of Liberty safety versus the trigger tech that I had. And the reason was I found out, and this is something that Jay pointed out at Ridgeline, that I was having a hard time reaching the safety. Actually, I got small hands. So I was having a hard time reaching the safety on the trigger tech as much as I like it. This one being a little bit wider made it easier for me to uh, reach and activate in different positions. So I decided to switch back to that. I'm trying it for now to see if that works better for me and we'll go from there. But the main thing, the main difference, the, the new changes all come in the upper from Sons of Liberty. So their upper itself is different. It's got a little bit different shape to it. There's a few things they've tweaked on it. You, you'll notice right away when you look at it, compare it to some of their other ones. The big difference that most people are gonna notice is the way that it interacts with their M89 rail and the way that the upper and and the rail connect together. And this is to help with anti-rotation. It's to help give a, a stiffer platform so that we get less deflection when we're putting weight or load into the rail so that it moves the barrel less. So these, these rails can act like levers, right? And as we put weight on them, whether it's pushing down on a barricade, whether it's loading into it with a bipod, whatever it is, basically where it connects to the barrel nut can cause deflection in the barrel. And you get these like point of impact shifts in different positions or depending on how you approach a barricade or what, what, you're, what input you're putting into the gun. So they're trying to minimize that for the end user, end user as much as possible by stiffening the rail, stiffening the interaction between the rail and the upper. And then the biggest change for me, and I feel like the, the best change and the coolest thing is their new precision barrel. This new barrel features a heavier profile. It features different rifling, different gassing, uh, different uh, th thread pitch, and all this leads to a more accurate barrel. I will leave a link down in the description if you wanna see all the details on that but it's all designed and meant to give the end user a more accurate, more precise, more consistent shooting gun, even down to the gas port size. When I talked to Mike about it, he said the reason we went down to a smaller gas port size was to try to mitigate some of that recoil for faster follow-up shots. We want guys to be able to spot their hits or misses and to be, be able to move on faster to the next target or provide a follow-up shot should be necessary. So that's everything they've done has been well thought out. They did a whole podcast talking about their new barrels and six arc. Did I say six arc? I said six arc. It's six max. But if you want to see that podcast, uh, I'll leave a link up here. You can check that out. It's a very educational podcast. They go in depth on a lot of things. It was really cool to, to hear that. But a lot of thought and work has gone into this. And so I was super excited about it. I got to test the prototype about a year ago. And I said from day one, I, I told, I remember telling Preacher, I was like, dude, if you guys can maintain this level of performance and this quality in production across the board, this is gonna be a phenomenal barrel for a lot of people. It's making the market more competitive, right? Now we're starting to get more and more super accurate barrels in the market, and the price is gonna start coming down, which is ultimately better for the end user. That is basically the, the setup that I have, the way that I have it set up, the way I have it kitted out is almost exactly the same as I had the other, that one over there. Basically just transferred the entire setup over. The one big difference is gonna be that I'm now shooting a Griffin can, so this is gonna be the Recce 7. And I'm shooting the Recce 7 versus the Recce 5 because of the thread pitch on the Sons of Liberty barrel. So it is a 5 8 by 24, if it's wrong, I'll leave it right here. Uh, it's the, it's just a different thread pitch, so it's a 7.62 can on there, but this is the Recce 7, and so far, been pretty impressed by it. So we'll, we, we need to get some more rounds down range with it, but been really good so far. Outside of that, 
everything else has pretty much been the same as far as setup goes. No, no big changes there. Uh, I know people are gonna ask, why 16 inch? Well, the division, you know, one, this is my do it all, my main squeeze, my my go-to guy. If I had to grab one gun, this is what I'm grabbing right now, right? Just because it's the one I train with the most, when I have more time behind. So 16 inch allows me to do a lot of things. Um, I still think my two favorite barrel links are 12.5 and then the 17.3 rifle link. 12.5 mid, 17.3 rifle length, I think are two really good barrels. I love those two. Just the way they shoot, the way they balance is phenomenal. But for the division I'm shooting in, I have to shoot a 16 inch barrel. So I can't shoot longer than that. And then shorter than that puts me at a little bit of a disadvantage uh, for the competitions that I want to shoot in the division that I want to shoot in. General purpose, I feel like, is the largest field for some of the matches that I go to and a lot of really good competition there. So that's why I like to shoot it. That's why I'm in that division. That's why I'm shooting a 16 inch barrel and not an 18 inch and why I'm not shooting the 12.5 anymore. So that's why the 16 inch. And a lot of people are also going to ask, why didn't you get the six max? Why did you go 5.56? The reason that I went 5.56 is because, again, the competitions I'm shooting are, some of them are 5.56 only. Quantified performance does allow you to shoot the 6, six max or 6 arc, um, it's up to you, but I wanted to shoot 5.56 because it's something that I know already, it's something I have access to, and I feel like because I do this, 5.56 is more accessible for the average end user. So given that there's a lot of guys who are following along in this journey and getting into scope carving, I wanted to show and use something that was accessible to them, right? I will get six max. I've already talked to Mike about it. We've already said, yes, we want to do that down the road and, and do some content on that, put some data around that and show you guys. There's already some good info out there from Mike Russo and from Sun and Shadows. So go check them out. If, if I can find the video, I'll link it up here. But there's already some data getting out there. It's not fully released yet. It's not, you know, super accessible yet. So once it starts to get to that point, yes, I will do that. And I will 100% I'll jump up to uh, open or whatever and, and shoot that because I think it'll be a lot of fun. But for the time being, because this is also a self-defense gun, because it's also something I'm wanting to share with you guys, I wanted to use 5.56 for that reason. And then the other question I get all the time is like, why LPVO? Why are you using an LPVO and an SPR in this style of gun? Why not a 4 to 16? Why not a 2 to 10? And I swear to God, there's somebody in the comments, like, why not an MPVO? Because MPVO isn't a thing. Stop trying to make it a thing. Uh, the reason I'm using the 1 to 8 is because, again, classification. It meets the requirements of the division I want to shoot in. So that's why I'm shooting an LPVO. And I've yet to find at a match where I felt like I was lacking in shooting at the LPVO. Obviously, when you start to shoot concealed targets or camouflage targets, more magnification is better, and that's where something like a 4 to 16 does a lot better, or something with parallax adjustment like a 2 to 10 does better because you can make that target a little bit clearer and you can see it better. I mentioned this in the Ridgeline video. You can check that video out up here. We did do some target identification that was like hidden in the woods that they had camouflaged, and it was easier for me to find it with my binos and then shoot it with the LPVO, but I didn't have an issue shooting it with the LPVO. When you get out at further distances, smaller targets that are hidden, it will be tougher to do it with this versus using something like a four to 16. It all depends on use case, it all depends on goal and context and what you're trying to do. So yes, there are some situations where that would be better, but for what I do, this works just fine. I've had no issues so far. I enjoy this setup and it works well for me. If you have questions specifically about it, leave it in the comments down below. Let's get into my initial impressions. So again, as I mentioned at the beginning, I've only got about 300 rounds through it so far. But right off the bat, I can tell you, I was super impressed. And where I left off shooting the prototype with Preacher at Symposium a year ago, it picked right up from there. So it, it, there was no fall off in between what the performance I saw there and the performance I saw out of this, which was very encouraging for me and super exciting because I immediately knew that they had carried over that quality and that performance and that it's gonna continue on for the end user. Right off the bat, first group I shot would have been a really, really good group if I could shoot. I shanked one off of there, so I, the, I between the fourth and fifth shot, I had to move the bag and I ended up taking that shot. This was a bad shot and I shanked it way off to the right. You can see that. But um, outside of that, the first first shots, literally the first shots out of the gun were phenomenal. So then from there, one of the things I've been doing is is just testing the, you know, anytime you get a new, a new barrel. So I've got like four barrels I'm testing and anytime you get a new barrel, the first thing you gotta do is figure out what it likes. Like once it starts to get broken in, you gotta start figuring out what that barrel likes and how it's gonna perform in, in different situations, like as it heats up and things like that. And we'll talk about that in a later video. But I, I immediately started running different ammo through it. And I'm like, okay, let's see, does it, does it like lighter grain? Does it like mid grain? Does it like heavier grain? What does it like? What does it not like? You know, 223 versus 556 and seeing how all that performed. And the, the crazy thing about this barrel for me, this is the first barrel I've had this happen where I haven't found anything it doesn't really like. So far, everything I've put through it, it shoots right around an MOA and then like 55 grain, inch and a half. 
And that's the best performing 55 grain uh, or best barrel with 55 grain I've seen so far. Consistently shooting MOA with match grade ammo or right around MOA with, you know, some cheaper ammo. Now that comes down to the quality of ammo, but it's been really impressive. And the weird thing, this was like a weird anomaly for me. I, I've noticed there's a very minimal zero shift. So anytime I'm shooting with a 223 or 556, where, and if I change grain from 55 grain to 69 to 75, 77 grain, there's a very minimal zero shift. And I'm talking like 0.1 mil zero shift. And you can see it on the papers where it, it everything's basically impacting almost in the same spot. And that's, I don't know if it's because this is a 223 wild barrel. I don't know if it's because of the profile. Maybe I'll ask Mike and he can chime in on it and explain to me the voodoo behind it. But I, I haven't seen a barrel that does this. Normally when I shoot out of a barrel and you know, I, I zero it for 77 grain, my 55 grain is way off somewhere else. It's like a huge gap. And I'm talking like two to three inch difference. And I haven't had that. So been very, very impressive in that regard. Um, the other thing that I've noticed is the gassing of it. So when Mike talked about having the smaller gas port, he said, hey, just so you know, like you may have to drop down a weight and buffer uh, your buffer weight just because we did, we, we brought the gassing down on a little bit. So I was like, okay, so it, it's gassed very well, it's bounced very well. I didn't have to change anything in my um, buffer weight because I am using a traditional baffle. So um, I didn't, but if I was using a flow through on here, I would have had to go down a, a buffer weight because it is, it is gassed really well and it sits on target. It's just, it cycles really well. No, no malfunctions, no issues so far. Again, only like 300 rounds through it. So um, time will tell on that to how it will perform. But so far it's been really good. The other thing is it's been super consistent. Like as I mentioned with the different types of ammo, very consistent out of there, ejection has been consistent. So all in all, it's been performing really well through its through its uh, initial stages. The other thing I wanna to touch on is velocity because I know somebody's gonna ask what kind of velocity are you getting at? That seems to be like kind of everybody's go-to, like, hey, what velocity are you getting? And that, that's only part of the equation. Go watch the video I did about ammo. It's only part of it. But velocity so far out of it is really good. I still think it's gonna speed up a little bit more, but with 77 grain IMI, I'm right around 2560, 2550, right around there. So initial impressions are promising. If it will bump up to the 25 or 26, 2675 or 2680, maybe even 2700 with 77 grain IMI out of a 16 inch, that would be pretty saucy, be pretty spicy. And I'd be, I'd be very, very happy with that. So we'll see what it does. I will continue to update in future videos, but right now, 2550, 2560 is about what I'm getting for IMI. I will test other ammos to give you guys data on that, but I just, there's not really a point in testing it right now because it's still speeding up. So once it settles, then I can test a bunch of different ammos to see what it's doing, uh, but it's still settling into that, to that spot. So overall, it's been pretty impressive to say the least. Now, again, take this all with a grain of salt because I am shooting for Sons of Liberty, but the performance out of it, mainly the consistency and the accuracy with the different ammos is what really sticks to me uh, or sticks out to me along with the gassing. Like it just overall, the package just runs really well. And I'm super excited about that. I'm, I'm still getting it dialed in. I'm still getting acquainted with it. And I'm excited to continue to test it and test different things out. So there's going to be more episodes coming where we test different things just to see how, how it performs in different situations. So you, you guys will see all that. If there's something specific that you guys want me to test in regards to this or something that you want to know about it, that you want to see a video on, leave it in the comments down below. Um, I appreciate you guys. Thank you again to uh, Mike and Kyle and Preacher and everybody from Sons of Liberty. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Cry to that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Is that it? I think that's it. That's what she said. Sons of Liberty. Sons of Liberty. Liberty blippity. Try that again.